In this video, I'm not gonna tell you about the best rep range for muscle gain because this guy is. This is Mr. Chad Doland or Mayo Doland. Mayo is uh, not given by birth. It's not his birth certificate, but Chad is head researcher of SBS. He's doing his PhD. He knows more than me. Over to you, Chad. Thanks, Luke. So, as Luke alluded to, we're talking about rep ranges. And with rep ranges, we know we're gonna be doing resistance training, as that's the most effective modality of exercise that we can do to increase muscle size and strength. A few reasons why resistance training grants those adaptations. For one is that when we move our muscles, they shorten and they lengthen against an external load or resistance like a dumbbell, a barbell, or a cable, we create mechanical tension within the tissue fibers. That mechanical tension is very important because that's what starts off that cellular pathway to signal everything else that needs to occur to increase muscle size and strength. Since we're doing some sort of exercise, we're gonna be repeatedly doing those contractions. Those contractions and mechanical tension will cause muscle damage. Muscle damage is going to play a role in inducing a myofibular protein response or muscle protein response because it needs to rebuild all those tissues that we subject to the, that we cause damage with um, from the tension. So in addition to the damage from the tension and the repeated contractions, we're also going to be producing some sort of metabolic byproducts within the muscle tissue during all that exercise. And that's also going to play a role in that post-exercise muscle protein synthesis response. So mechanical tension from weightlifting starts everything off. Doing mechanical tension through repeated repetitions will cause muscle damage. And then of course the repetitions themselves and the muscle damage itself will cause metabolic stress or byproducts to accumulate within that region. Overall, everything sums together to make the muscles bigger and stronger. Now what's interesting is we've traditionally prescribed the amount of resistance training we wanna do with these rep ranges. These rep ranges come from this thing called the strength training continuum that was developed by Anderson and Kearney a few decades ago. Now the strength training continuum, as any continuum, has a very high end and a very low end. At the high end, we have lots of repetitions for low weights or resistances. In the middle, we have a medium amount of repetitions for moderate weights and resistances. And at the low end, we have less repetitions for higher weights or resistances. With training specificity, we can stipulate or we can assume that lots of reps for low weights is gonna increase our muscle endurance. At the other end, a little bit of reps for very high weights will increase our muscular strength. And then in the middle, it's been reported to work on hypertrophy or kind of a middle ground of that adaptation. Now, traditionally, you might hear someone say, do eight to 12 repetitions to increase your hypertrophy, while you wanna do less than six repetitions at very high weights to increase your muscle strength. Now, someone had to have asked the question because my lab asked the same question is, is 10, eight, or 12 repetitions inherently better for muscle size? Whereas five, four, three, two, and one, are those inherently better for muscle strength? Or is there something that we're missing here? A growing body of literature has suggested that the overall amount of work or exercise volume we do will play a role in the type or the magnitude of adaptation we receive. So what my lab did was we took the exact same amount of work and total pounds moved and we split it up into days with 12 repetitions, days with 10 repetitions, or days with eight repetitions in a daily undulating periodization design and had one group only do hypertrophy training, right? And then we split that same amount of work up into six reps, four reps, or two reps in another daily undulating periodization design and had that other group only do strength training. What we found was that after eight weeks, there was less than a few kilos lifted difference between each group or each person in each group, and that the resistance training adaptations were effectively the same. So we had the same amount of hypertrophy in the chest and thighs, whether subjects or participants only lifted with 12, 10, or eight reps compared to six, four, or two, rep, two reps after eight weeks of training. Now the higher rep group, since we controlled for volume, had to do less sets to achieve the same amount of work. So their training sessions lasted for roughly one half the time. The lower rep group obviously had to do more sets. And since we need to rest adequately to preserve exercise performance, it took longer, about twice as long. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said, strength and hypertrophy adaptations were the same. 
So the practical takeaways are a couple things. If you're controlling volume, your magnitude of adaptation or the amount of change you should receive should be the same whether you do high reps or low reps. So if you have an individual that really likes to train and feel a pump, maybe keep them with the 12, 10, or 8 reps. They can do less sets and achieve the same amount of work as if they were doing 5, 4, or 3 reps. Okay, but again, they will like it, so they will probably perform it more often or with more effort, and that's going to lead to more consistent results or gains. On the other hand, if someone likes to do higher weights and really feel like they're grinding through tough loads on the bar, they can do more sets of lower rep training and still receive hypertrophy as well as strength. Okay, and finally, like I said, consistency is king and specificity is a governing principle of exercise design because it really dictates the type of adaptations we receive. So if someone is very, very advanced within their training, specificity, specificity of training should have a small uh, deciding factor in whether they do high reps or low reps. Um, but again, with novice or intermediates, we would use more personal preference to decide that for us. Damn, Chad. Was that better? That's the one. Okay, cool. I told you he's smart. Chad, thanks a lot for that. Um, where can I follow you on social? Um, well, you can find me with Mayo Dolan on Twitter, and then we'll just link up the Snapchats and the Facebooks and everything else below. Perfect. Cheers, Chad. Make sure if you like the video, you click like and you subscribe to the channel. We want to help the community grow. So you play a crucial role on that. Let us know in the comment section as well. What's your preferred rep range? Chad, what's yours? Well, Come as a on. former powerlifter and former bodybuilder, really just former weightlifter in general, I like all of them, but five is my favorite. Five, mine's eight to 12. Was a bro from the start and sticking with the typical eight to 12 rep range. Know your roots. Exactly. <laughs>